Hi guys, this is a demonstration of Power BI's capabilities for uh, code development using Git integration. So, uh, in the new Git integration approach that has been introduced, uh, the Power BI file is saved as a Power BI project in the form of many different JSON files. Uh, many of these files make up the report, and there are two sections of this basically the report side and the semantic model side. So your report will be saved as two folders, a report folder, a semantic model folder, and you'll have a PBIP file that you can click to open the actual report after compiling all these JSON files. So I will go through just one, uh, one thorough walkthrough of how this uh, code development will work in real, real time. So let's say we have a repository on Azure DevOps where our current file is uploaded in the form of this Power BI project, right? So the first thing that any developer would do is to clone this repository into a local environment. Now, this can be done using VS Code, uh, one of the popular code editors. You'll have to create a new folder on your machine where you would like to clone this repository. Uh, and basically what uh, this Git system will do is that it will make sure that all the changes that you do here are tracked and uh, you can commit them and push them to the actual repository once your development is done. So as you can see over here, we have cloned our entire repository. So this whole report over here is saved as a bunch of JSON files now on our own PC or any machine. And uh, we can click on this PBIP file to open this report and this report will not have data. So you'll have to refresh it once for the data to load as the, these JSON files that the Power BI reports are now saved as only contain metadata, right? So the structure of the report. So, but uh, all you have to do is click on refresh after uh, and this data is refreshed, right? Uh, over here, you can see this is our uh, source control panel for Git. So the first thing you should do after cloning a branch is to make your own branch. So you clone that repository, now you make a branch. Over in this case, it's called dev1. Uh, so that you can do your own stuff, your own work in that branch, right? And uh, now over here, we see the developer uh, number one's perspective. They've cloned the repository, made their own branch, and now they're adding a visual on this page as the report was currently empty, right? The moment you save this change, you will see on the Git panel in VS Code that uh, these changes that uh, Git has detected are present over here. You can click on it to see exactly what changes have happened in our JSON files uh, from that uh, from us dragging and dropping that visual in the PBI file and saving it, right? And you can stage them and then commit them into this branch of ours and uh, commits are basically used to track your change history, right? So you can just write added column chart as the commit, and then you can publish this branch. So this branch will now show up as uh, another branch from the main branch on Azure uh, DevOps repositories, right? This is the second developer perspective. They have also cloned this report that was on the main branch of our Azure DevOps and they are adding their own chart they're just adding a simple table here and again it's the same process you make a change you commit those changes into your own branch so this is uh, another branch by developer number two called dev2 right so he's creating a branch called dev2 and committing those changes and then publishing that branch so this is two developers simultaneously working on this one report in their own branches now uh, over here you can see we have three branches now what is needed to do uh, in each branch you can go and check uh, the history of the changes and what all has been done but now to merge all of these branches into one functioning report you will need to pull uh, put pull requests so pull requests are used to merge different branches and different developers work into one single branch so as you can see after uh, putting up a pull request, you can either approve it or decline it. And it shows if there are any conflicts between the work of the two developers. In this case, you don't have a conflict, but if there is a conflict, uh, DevOps points out where the conflict is and uh, you can go there and resolve it, right? So over here, 
uh, we're basically merging all the branches together. So both of our developers' works are being one by one merged into the master branch. After this merge is complete, you can see the history of our master branch and it shows that both the developers' work has been integrated into this branch. Now to pull this these changes, uh, pull the, this uh, new master file into our developer workspace, I mean our developer's machine, uh, you will have to switch back to the main branch. And this is another, again, developer one perspective. And you'll have to pull these changes. After the pull is performed, uh, you'll have to reopen your Power BI report, right? Because uh, the PPIP report that is opened already will not detect these changes. You'll have to close it and reopen it. But once you reopen it, you can see that both the changes have been integrated. Uh, basically, this is developer one, one's uh, perspective. So when he opens the file after going to the main branch, since both the branches have been merged into main now, he can see both the visuals on his one report, whereas he had not created that table previously. This is just uh, generally how it works. Developer one develops his own branch. Developer two develops in his own branch. Branches are reviewed and merged on the service. And then both the developers can pull these changes uh, or this updated file onto their machine to continue their work. Now to integrate this with Power BI service, you first have to create a premium workspace and uh, then you have to go to the git integration part of it and choose the branch with which uh, the Azure DevOps repository branch with which you want to sync this workspace. After that, uh, the syncing will happen, it will take a while. And then one important thing is that you'll have to refresh the data here too, because Azure DevOps repositories uh, contains the metadata, not the actual data. So you'll have to just once, uh, as you can see, the report will have all the objects where it will come as blank. The data won't show. So you'll have to go once, you'll have to check your uh, uh, data source credentials, you'll have to put them in and then you'll have to refresh. After that, you can see this is a one-time process, but after that, the report just works. It's always synced to the Azure DevOps and you can control what all changes you want to do. And even if you make a change on service, you can commit that over to DevOps. So yeah, this was a short demonstration of how the Git integration works.